しくお願いします。Me in '98, I think. He knocked me down in the first round, and it was such a difficult fight for me, and uh, and always try to come to come to overcome something, but. When I do this with him, I cannot because when I go close, he's a good boxer. But then I keep the distance and kill his right. legs. It's all like tactical of the game, you know? Yeah. But with the Nesso, when you give him space, boom, 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 yeah, boom, he, kick. Yeah, so he just he takes and give up. Yeah. Tournament to the system to you know, as a game. 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 過酷のあるのはもう当たり前なんですけど、全部辛かったものはあれを。After I won the first round, the first the quarterfinals, I went to the semis. You get back and and your legs hurting, your your arms hurting, like you you just feel like certain parts of your body hurts. And for me, for the first time, I had to really, really dig deep, really tell myself, you know what, this is what men are made of, this is what champions are made of. So you gotta go back out there. ゴーストカップ無事に終了しましてあの皆さんが連れてきた選手もまあ,いあの素晴らしい激闘を繰り広げていただきました。Last night very successful the host cup also the all the fight is a good fight hard fight nice fight right でまずは皆さんがあの推薦選手の自分が連れてきた推薦選手のその出来とかその感想を聞かせていただけますか。昨日はトップバッターであの第一試合であのうちの朝原が登場させてもらいまして、でまああの大会全体的にすごいいい盛り上がりを見せる質契約となってくれるような試合を見せてくれたんで、すごく自分は満足してますし、あの対戦相手だったファブリシオ選手も前回あのモエタイの競合との戦いを見て、はい、見てあの強い選手っての分かってたんで、まあどんな内容になるのかあのちょっと僕も楽しみにはしていたんですけど、あの。一ラウンドに膝蹴りを入れて見事に KO で勝つことができたので、次に繋がる、うん、あのいい復活劇だったなと自分はすごく嬉しく思っています。はい。Yeah, I cannot be、uh, satisfied because my my fighter was、uh, knocked out and I didn't expect that.、Uh, so、uh, yeah, I have to see、uh, how to do that the next time. My boy destroyed this guy. My boy destroyed this guy. He really get beaten up very bad. Went down three times and、uh, yeah, I'm satisfied. <laughs> I second what Andreso said. Um, you know, Lee trained really hard for this fight, and also, you know, technically he he was ready mentally. He was ready. So when the fight started, it was a good fight when it started.、Mm -hmm. and, There, it was a back-to-back -back kind of fight.、Um, I particularly didn't want him to fight off the ropes. I wanted him to stay in the center. And、um, but his opponent was a game opponent, and、uh, the guy's a very good fighter, without a doubt. So it was, you know, the game was, in my opinion, I thought it was it was a good fight up to the point when he got caught with a body shot.、Um, <laughs> you know, these things happen sometimes. It's, it's either on your chin or on your on that liver, and so once that happens, sometimes. You can't get up from that, and so,、um, like you know, said, you know, you just make adjustments, and, and you get better, and you learn better.、Um, but I also like to see him fight at a little bit lighter. I mean, he was he fought, I think, like five pounds heavier than he normally fights at. But hey, listen, the fight's a fight. When you see four guys like us who have fought in K1 for many years, we would fight guys that were either bigger. Taller, it didn't matter. So for us, yeah. Twice our weight. Right. <laughs> exactly. So you know, again,、uh, in this fight game, it's、um, you're always learning, and it's definitely the fight game is the only game that's really unforgiving at times, because with the highs are highs and the lows are very low.、Uh, that being said, with fighters, you know, you you kind of just bite down and go, you know what, let's learn from this and move forward. So. Um, 
All in all, it was, I thought the whole show was a good show. Uh, do you walk to the corner and uh, maybe you remember back on your fight? Example, uh, you, you see the own student, yeah. then you walk to the corner, maybe remember back. Yeah, it's, it's funny because when the music was on and the, the, the ring announcer was, was actually announcing the fighters for the uh, ceremony, op opening ceremony, mm -hmm. I said to Ernesto, it's amazing how time and certain things in life put you back in time. Uh, because, you know, the last time we heard that, that voice as an announcing like that, the K1 music, um, all of us, the four of us, Musashi, Ernesto, Peter, myself, we would get ready to go walk out to the ring because that's what we were doing too. So watching that last night took us to that moment again of, you know, when we were all competing. So it, yeah, no, definitely it, it took us there for sure. You know, and then of course you still got to do your job in the corner. あの、<笑> ま、それ、あの、前回のレジェンド、レジェンド選手たちのこう、こう、精神、それ、もう気持ちも高まったと思うので、すごくいい試合になったと思いますし、さらなる盛り上がりが僕は期待できるんじゃないかなと、これからですね、思います。The moment you uh, you hear the music and it's yeah, it brings you back to to K1 period. Uh, but you're not a fighter anymore. Uh, and uh, so I can separate that. Yeah, for for the fighter, you you just try to uh, to be sharp and to be uh, to come to give the right uh, instructions. Um, and yeah, that's that's the way I think about it. For me, I think back in the time because it's in Japan and you announce the Japanese things. So <clears throat> so I think a little bit back in time. But for me, it's like every day because. And next week my daughter fights every week, every girl, every organization. So we stay in it all day, all the time. So for me it's quite normal. Uh, next week my daughter fights, the week after I go back to Japan. All the time I'm busy with, uh, with the sports. But it's a nice thing, I think. It's like a hobby. Please tell me about your fighter time before retirement. For me, it was, listen, it's so hard to, when you're fighting against some of the best in the world, and when you have people like these gentlemen that are here, Mr. San, Peter Ertz, Mr. Hoos, when you think about, there was Mike Bernardo, Andy Hook, uh, Francisco Filho, I mean, there's a long list of, or a very short list of top level guys, you know, there's at least 10, 12 guys. And when people ask, because this question is asked to me many a times, which fight stands out the most? For me, it was just to be able to share the ring with, I mean, how many people can say they share the ring with Ernesto Hoos, with Peter Ertz, with Musashi, with Andy Hogue, with Mike Bernardo? I mean, there's only very few names that you can list 
that share the ring with these amazing champions. So for me, the highlight was every fight that I had in K1 because my first fight was against Nurse Hoos. And what an honor that was, you know what I mean? So, and from there, it just got better and better and better because it was, you know, when you, when you, when you come into an, a K1 organization and you're at the top of the heat, like your nurse, so, so you, you know it's just gonna get harder and harder and harder. So for me, it was every fight mattered and every fight I enjoyed because even though their fights I lost, their fights I won, but I think it's just to say that I share the ring with some of the greatest fighters in the world is probably the best way to put it. ま、あの、本当、すごい今ホリーさん<笑> いつかやっつけてやるっていう気持ちが自分を強くしてくれたと思いますし、それでやっぱりあの頑張れたところはあるんで、だからもうこの三人にはすごい感謝してますし、自分の八十四戦現役生活で試合しましたけど、全部ベ
because I want I want to move around. And Eric said, "Yeah, the only uh, heavyweight you, you're going to find is in the in the pro class." And so he and it was sparring that day. So he came in, and before sparring started, Eric said to me, he "Goes, hey, be careful! If that guy came in here, like, kind of arrogant and and asking for heavyweights." And I said, "Okay." So I went one round with one other guy, and he went with an amateur fighter, who was a big boy too, but. I saw, you know, he was trying to bully the amateur fighter. So I, I was like, okay, I'm next. <laughs> so I go up to this guy and I said, hey, yeah, do you want to go to the next round? He goes, oh, yeah, sure. And again, like, he's he's kind of like probably young, you know, young Norke. Yeah. Oh. Kind of Big like that, mm. you know? And uh, so he threw a jab. I parried. I threw a jab. And he parries, so I low kick him. And he kick, and then he goes, you, uh, there's kicking? And I'm like, yeah, this is MMA sparring. Kicking, wrestling, jujitsu, boxing, kickboxing, it's everything. Okay. He goes, oh, okay. So then we face off again, he jab, I, st I st threw a stiff jab, and his hair and eyes, he goes, okay, that's enough. You're trying to knock me out. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even try anything. I was just, yeah. it. <laughs> you know, so occasionally we get that kind of thing, but I think what he was trying to do because of his size, yeah. he thought that everybody was going to be afraid of him. Yeah. <laughs> what he didn't know in our freaking K1, we fight everybody. like big, you know, anybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so he got a rude awakening. Then needless to say, I said to him, and I used some really <coughs> profound words. <laughs> I said, listen here, you mother effer. Don't you ever come back to our gym again or I'm gonna knock you out. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. And then he never came back. No, of course. <laughs> About your uh, hard, hardest fight, your hardest memory when you was in the fight time. The hardest memory? I think it was with, with Peter. Because Peter always come forward. <laughs> Peter always come forward. Yeah. If he's good, if he's bad, doesn't matter. He always yeah. come forward. Yeah. So that makes you crazy. You know? That's why they don't like me. They always have an if when they beat me. Yeah. They have damage for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, but not, not that I have that much damage, but it was always like a hard fight. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and uh, you, I mean, we fought each other so many times. So at some point I was like, okay, I know already it's gonna be hard, <laughs> you know. So I put my mind in it and like, okay, it's gonna be hard again, right? You know, and but it's always like when Peter uh, beat me in '98, I think he knocked me down in the first round, and it was such a difficult fight for me, and uh, and always tried to come to come to overcome something, but. It was impossible. Mm -hmm. So, so that my my like those memories like of course we fought them many times <laughs> and we knew each other. So I wouldn't train and I wouldn't I wouldn't really train anymore for Peter because I knew what he was going to, <laughs> to go to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this this is this 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 will come. And, but you knew for sure right. from the start that it would be it would be uh, very hard. Fight. Yeah, be the tough. thing is when you give. And that's your space. The combination is so easy with everything. There. You have to press him. When I do this with him, I cannot. Yeah. Because when I go close, he's a good boxer. Mm -hmm. With him, I keep the distance and kill right. his legs. Yeah. It's a little tactical of the game, you know? Yeah. But with an so when you give him space, boom, 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 yeah, boom, he, kick. Yeah, he so he takes when I give him. Yeah. That is difficult for him. Yeah. I'll run out in. Yeah, it's true. How many yeah. times will you fight though? Six, seven. Six. Yeah. Six, we fought six times. Oh, uh, it was always a little bit. Thin. But <laughs> the real fight, the first fight, the first time we fought was in '88, and then Peter was late replacement. Peter was only 17, I think. Yeah. And oh, uh, so uh, the second time was in uh, Japan, yeah. and the K first K one. Oh. Uh, the, then I lost. Well, wonderful. 
No, the, the second time was 93, and then the third time was 95. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Became, oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we became champion. Then we had an extra round, eh? I think we had an yeah, extra yeah. round. And the fourth time was in 98, after I became champion. It was 96, 97, I got sick. My infection in my stomach, and I had five. I didn't know how to get the kitchen six for five. Mm. And I fought two thousand Mike Bernardo. He knocked me out very hard. Oh, yeah. But I was oh. sick. And the thing is, normally my trainer man must not let me fight. Mm. But he didn't mind, you know. So I was thought, only shitting. Thought about the money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's a little bit thing and stupid of me because yeah. I was so sad. I knocked him down first time, and then he knocked me out maybe five times or something. Every time stand up, but I have no power after the front, uh, first round. I was tired, you know. But it took half a year or something till I get better. And uh, that was the worst time, and the best time I think is the beginning. Yeah. Where we kill each other and we go drink a beer. You know, <laughs> that was the best time for me. <laughs> but it, not too big yet. Yeah. That was for me the best time. And you know, it's funny that he says that, Peter says that, because I always found like. In K1, there, and Peter's right, there was a couple of guys that were kind of snobby. <laughs> but that. majority of the guys, and especially like Ernesto or Peter, I'd always found like, um, and Masashi, uh, I'd always found like every time I saw these guys, it was always friendly. Like yeah. you knew they were real. They weren't pretending to be anything other than themselves. And that, to me, those are real champions. Those are true champions. Because when you see them in this environment, and you see them in this environment, and then this environment, and they're exactly the same people, you know those are real people. And they were, so you, for me, like, these guys, I have met so much love and respect for these guys because they're just real people in the sense of being champions at this level. And yeah. so for me, that's but, amazing. But it's also a sport. It's fighting, but also a sport. Right, you right. Know, you yeah. become friends. You see each other a lot. Yeah. Advertising, we do some things together. Yeah. A lot of work, television. Yeah, but there's some people that don't understand that. No. You know, they, they get too snotty, <laughs> and, you know? <laughs>僕もデビューした頃はガリガリだったんですけど、ガリガリでした。今、今思うとみんな考えた細かったなっていう日本に来た頃はっていう風に思うんですね。まあ、K1になってみんな変わっていったよ。うん。みんなやっぱ正方さ
<clears throat> coming into K1, I'd never fought tournaments before. So to experience, you know, fighting champion after champion after champion, I, K1, that particular moment when, I can't remember exactly what year it was, but after I won the first round, uh, the first the quarterfinals, I went to the semis. But, you know, you get back and, and your legs hurting, your, your arms hurting, like you, you, you just feel like certain parts of your body hurts. And for me, for the first time, I had to really, really dig deep, uh, not only just down to my sore, core and so, uh, the core of my soul, but also in my mind, like my, I had to really tell myself, you know what, this is what men are made of, this is what champions are made of, so you gotta go back out there. And so I learned that through um, K1. I learned that through those tournaments, the Grand Prix, um, because when you've never experienced it, you never know. So, and the way in the fight game, you know, it's, it's like, there's, there's two ways you are. You either fight like a real warrior or you quit. Well, I wasn't gonna quit. You never see Ernesto quit. You never see Musashi quit. You never see Peter Ertz quit. So it's the same thing. So the tournament in itself made, you know, changed something inside me that it made me even more stronger to come out again and to face another champion. You know, it's just, it really taught me about me because you have to know yourself. Because sometimes people can pretend something and they can fake something and some people won't see it but you yourself know if you are just you know trying to fake it or whatever because deep down you know you got to come out and fight and so yeah it taught me I, you know I always thought I was stronger mentally and but that particular time it taught me to be stronger even more so because I never done that before so so it was good it was a good lesson for me because it made me understand who I was as a person. Forget about fighting, it, it taught me who I was, you know what I mean? Um, I was prepared to, you know, to die in there in the sense of giving everything I had. And so it was a good learning experience because like I do with my life, everything that I've learned through martial arts, through competing, through fighting these amazing champions, um, I always revert that back to my life. How would I do this? How would I do that? In the fight game, so there are certain things in life that you can bring that into and, and allow it to work for you or to allow yourself to grow as a person. あの、トーナメントっていうそのシステムというのを始めたんですが、やっぱりここにいる正トップファイターたち、2マジって人のトーナメントに参加するというだけでももう過酷のあるのはもう当たり前なんですけど、外国人選手も世界予選ありますね。トーナメントが年に1回だけそのまあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ
試合するという、まあ、見事に秒殺されてしまいましたし、<笑>一発の重さというものを痛感しましたし、まあ、2003年は初めてファイナリストになったんですけど、やっぱすごい顔がどんなったんでしたし。その2000翌年の2004年は決勝まで上がれたんですけど決勝でもまさかの5ラウンド<笑>延長全部使って全部で13ラウンド戦ったりでまあ優勝はできなかったんですけどもうすごいもう最後はしゃべるのもしんどいというぐらいもう疲労困憊になりましたしでその次の年は気合十分で臨んで。だから準々決勝でルストランクライフに思いっきり続き入れられて記憶をなくしてしまって記憶がないまま試合をしてまあ何とか勝ったんですけどうんまあ次の準決勝でグラブフェイトザーにまあ倒されてしまうというまあそういうトーナメントの一番こうなんか魔物が住んでるとするならば一番その魔物に。疲れてしまったかなという部分もあ,のありながらでも 2, 2年連続でファインダイストまでなれたというのはすごい大きな自分の中では功績ですしまあ一番嬉しいのはここにいるファイトップファイターたちと、まあ、一緒にこうやって肩を並べてれるということが一番自分を。Okay, yeah, for me,、um, <coughs> thinking about the first, very first K1 uh, was uh, uh, yeah, my first fight with Peter. So I knew Peter. I fought PB, Peter and I fought、uh, in 88. 88? Yeah. Fought in 88.、Um, basically,、uh, I was supposed to fight someone else. But. Uh, uh, Then Peter was a late replacement.、Um, so I won that fight. And I was like, okay, but you will be there because I felt his power already. And、um, so we fought each other again in、uh, 93 in the first K1. That was a hard fight. It was a very hard fight. I was lucky to win. And then、uh, I fought Maurice Smith. No, with Peter, I, I injured my right hand、uh, in that fight. And then I fought、uh, Maurice Smith.、And、with Maurice, I injured my right foot. Okay, but still, I won the fight.、Uh, I went back to the, to the dressing room.、Um, I had 10, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Then I had to go to the final. The fight against Branko. I never forget that, you know. It's like. I will not say that I would have won、uh, the fight、yeah. uh, if I had more time, but it was ridiculous. Yes,、yeah. I had the same time one time also. It's too short.、Yeah. It was ridiculous. Depends where it's poor you are. Much、no, you know? different. And, and, I, and I thought, I thought that at that moment, I thought, this will never happen to me again.、Mm. When I come to an, into the final, I will win. I will win. And、um, I was seven times more in the final, and I won all seven、uh, finals. So, yeah, for me, that is、uh, the best memory. I was in the first one and I was in the last one. I was in the wall. all the tournaments. Only injury sometimes, you know, with f u y o k i c k his elbow.、Mm. I was fighting Las Vegas. I overstayed my arm, a piece of bone <laughs> broken in my arm. First fight. So, second fight, I had Mario Smith. And then the final, I could do nothing anymore because my shins, everything fucked. And then the l e g knocked me out. Normally, it cannot happen this. No, no, but yeah, the thing is,、good. I cannot punch, I cannot kick, I can、yeah. do nothing. I remember、but、I was there. I、yeah. was there. I was commentating here. Yeah, but the, yeah. normally I have a lot of fun. I cannot even punch. No, no. You、yeah. only make a jab. The only thing I make a jab. <laughs> the only thing. And it was totally damaged. Yeah. And also, one time I was、uh, fighting the first fight, Mighty Mo, and then second fight, I had to fight uh, uh, Sam Shield.、Yeah. Four rounds, three rounds. Yeah. It was a really hard fight.、Yeah. And the other side was、uh, also from Golden Glory, was Saki and Alice over him. But Saki broke his hand first fight, but he continued to step out second round.、Yeah. 
to make him fit. Yeah. Was, and I had only maybe 10 <coughs> minutes to relax yeah. between this fight. The cut here and on my eye at 10 minutes and he was totally fit. So yeah. I was fucked in the yeah. final, you know. <coughs> That's the problem with tournaments, but. Yeah. But the, normally the pain <coughs> with my shin and hands and legs is okay. But sometimes when it's too big, then it's a problem with other yeah. fights, you know. Yeah. But most of the time I put the pain away in my mind. It's more mentally, I think. Right, right now. Please tell me your feeling, your memory. What do you think about uh, already gone, Mike Bernard and uh, Andy? Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's one of those things that's unfortunate because um, I don't know if anybody knew this, but when I was uh, after I fought Mike McDonald, Andy and I had were were emailing each other that you know one time he was gonna we were gonna train together in Japan and so I said oh man thank you I, you know I look forward to that and you yeah and uh, and then of course um, I come to the fight I won that fight I knocked Mike out and then we were here um, I think the fight, yeah, the fight was Saturday. I think I flew back home on Monday, I think it was. But he was already in the hospital that Friday. And of course we didn't know. Um, and then I get, when I got back, and then on Thursday I got a phone call from, I think, oh, I'm trying to remember if it was Daeske or Kenny Mike, um, saying that- Ken. It was Ken, right? Yeah. Ken called me. Right, so <laughs> Ken said that, um, that Andy had passed, and I'm like, what? So yeah, for it, it, it was it was kind of crazy, really, because normally, um, but I think, and this is, I, I, you know, it's really, this is where a lot of people don't understand the kind of the kind of bond you bond with these guys that, because you share a lot, of, you know, you share parts of your life with these guys. You share your uh, your training moments. You share your uh, emotional moments. You share your even though it's competition, but a lot of it uh, you share this kind of bond because you're in there and it, you know kid, fight the fight world is the only sport that you train to hurt each other, but when it's done, you had this bond with that person that you never forget. Like I would. You know, for me, I would take it to my grave when that time comes because I have a piece of Musashi, a piece of Ernesto, a piece of Peter, and I have a piece of me because we we share these really intimate moments. You know what I mean? Like, and nobody can really understand that feeling unless you're in there. And so, so when Andy passed. Um, I, th I think it had some sort of effect because we couldn't understand at such a, you know, such a strong um, sportsman. He's a sportsman, and he looked healthy, but little we knew he wasn't healthy. You know what I mean? And so it was really, you know, one of those sad moments where you just go, oh, <clears throat> you can never take life for granted because you never know when that time will come. And especially because, you know, us that have kids, you gotta cherish every moment because you don't know what that time is. And it's now like, what, 19 years since he passed? And so it's, uh, you know, it was a big loss to the martial arts world, to the fans and, you know, to everybody that, cared about him, his family and whatnot. Mike Bernardo was exactly the same. You know, um, I think I was a lot more closer to Mike than I was to Andy, but we, Andy and I were starting to develop uh, a relationship, so to speak, towards the end of his life. And, but I think, you know, I think Peter and Rusashi and Ernesto knows, knows Andy better than I did. He even took a piece of us 
you know, because we are fought him. And he took a piece of us with him when he went. And so that's the same as Mike Bernardo. Mike Bernardo did, you know, was kind of like that too. Um, unfortunately, you know, the circumstances, the way they happened and, you, you know, you don't know what goes through somebody's mind. And, and so when he passed too, it was the same thing. I mean, there's a longer story to that because I saw ads on Facebook. Well, his last post on Facebook was Mike Bernardo apologizing to, to people that he had hurt along the way. And he was thanking people that was there for him along the way. So I called Jan Nordica and I said, hey, you better try and find Mike right now. But I saw this on Facebook. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so I called Jan Nordica in South Africa. I'm like, you need to find Mike right now because he, he's got a post up and Jan was calling everybody and his family was calling because his family saw the post on Facebook as well. And so eventually they found him and they got him to the hospital, but he was trying to kill himself through sleeping tablets. He was trying to overdose on sleeping tablets. Yeah. Now, again, I, you know what? And I don't really want to talk about the sad part of Mike's life because Mike had a, a, an amazing martial arts life. So I don't really want to go to that part of, you know, because it's an interview thing. But I want to remember him as the warrior that he was um, because Again, there's a lot of, there's, there's a long piece to that. But I think the most important part for us is to remember who Andy was and who Mike Bernardo were in the martial arts world and who they were for us because we competed against them. Um, and so they will be forever K1 brothers to us. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, they, they definitely brought a lot of beautiful times to K1, to the K1 fans, to us as fighters. Andy Hugo was a karate no dai senpai. He 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 was まあ、そこからもう見てる側だったんで、まさか一緒に練習して試合もするなんてその時は想像もしてなかったですけど、それこそ96年にまあ僕も参戦したトーナメントで空手家として初めてアンディフグが優勝した時、まあ。その対戦相手がまあベルナルドだったんですけど、まあ僕はベルその時準決勝でベルナルドにあのサンランドにダウンクラって負けてしまったんですけど、まあ初めてサイン、それでサインになれたんですけど、まあ空手がまあキックボク
大阪で一時一緒にずっと練習して信仰を深めてですごいジェ,あのジェントルマンで心優しい人間だったんで。あの一緒にご飯食べたりもあのしたりしてましたしそれこそまああの別れちゃいましたけど奥さんと結婚する時は、うん、日本でお祝いをして、はい、みんなでそのお祝い盛り上げたりとかっていう思い出も残ってますしだからまあこの2人がもうこの世にねっていうのはすごい残念。で仕方がないですよね。Um, I remember、uh, when Andy died,、um, I just got I got a call from Ken Imai, crying like Andy died. But、um, I think two weeks before that, two or three weeks before that, I had a fight.、Uh, I had a, I fought a tournament in、uh, Japan. Uh, qualification tournament for the Grand Prix K1 2000 and、uh, and I remember I had injury on my、uh, leg so I surrendered and then、uh, we were looking at each other that moment I was looking at and we were looking at each other and then I will never forget that because that was the last time you and Andy yeah、oh. Andy was in the crowd right And、um, it was the last time our eyesight met each other. And、um, yeah, then、uh, two or three weeks later,、uh, I heard he died. So it was, to me, it was so crazy.、Mm-hmm. You know, it was, I could not believe. Later, I heard Peter was still in Japan and、uh, some other guys also. <coughs>、yeah. and, and nobody knew what, what, hap- what was happening、um, because it all went so fast.、Right. Um, yeah, it, was, it, it was crazy.、Uh, and I fought with Andy how many times? Four times. And、uh, yeah, also always hard fights, good fights. Always. I, didn't, I don't think Andy was the, the biggest talent, but he had a lot of heart. Lokis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, long, no, I didn't feel his locus so much.、Uh, he, 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 his boxing was so so,、yeah. his, in my opinion.、Uh, but in total, he, had, he was a real warrior. He,、yeah. he always wanted to fight. And、uh, you really had to knock him out, like Peter did,、uh, to stop him.、Um, with Mike, it was also crazy.、Uh, I was、uh, coming here to Japan for the Tokyo Marathon. I told myself I wanted to do a marathon once in my life. And、um, when I was uh, here, uh, no, just before I left, I heard that、uh, Mike died, that he committed suicide. And to me, that was very strange, you know.、Uh, he was always into. Into the Bible, into God, and into this and that. And then he kills himself. You know, I, I couldn't understand.、Um, but okay, you know, when you have your problems、um, and you cannot see the things straight anymore, then maybe that's the way you, you, have, you, you, you do it.、Um, but I wouldn't、uh, expect something like that from Mike.、Mm-hmm. Um, but still, I have、uh, contact with his brother, Carl. Sometimes.、Mm. Um, and、um, yeah, I'm happy that they are doing good.、Uh, because sometimes we talk about Mike, and uh, um, yeah, I'm, the family is okay. I think it, it, it's already, I think, six years ago. No, it was 12, seven years ago.、Yeah. Seven years ago.、Um, And、uh, yeah, I think you、mm-hmm. learn to live with it and you give it some place in your life. Yeah, Andy was close because we see each other a lot. We go out, those things. And I was here, he just died when I arrived in the hospital.、Uh, with Mike,、uh, the last few years I didn't have contact with him anymore because、yeah. Yeah. anyway, you don't see, you don't, 
know what's happening, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's really bad those things happen. These things happen in life. So you have to enjoy your life, you know. Yeah. So do the things. And for the fighters, I think Bernardo was really explosive hands. Can, because yeah. you have to be sharp all the time. Because one time you can be finishing. So for the fighting wise, you know. So but it's a shame they passed away, you know. I think it's a big loss for the martial arts. Please tell me, what do you think about uh, fighting sports in Japan future? What do you want? What Do you have any uh, dream or planning or uh, um, opinion? For me, I think the top times is finished now. It was like down a long time, and now I see it's coming up. I see now with the host cup, rice last time, I see they're getting better also. And it's getting more, it's getting back again. It's not like the old days, but they're growing again, you know. So it's a nice thing I see. I love to to, yeah. to see this, you know, for if we are finished. But for our students and for our guys, I hope there's going to be some big thing like came on before. In my opinion, I, Japanese martial arts is too traditional. It is too traditional, it's too, too much about uh, I'm the boss and one is the boss and the other one is not the boss and I'm the sensei or I'm the shihan or I'm the kancho or something like that. And that is more important than, than the, the performance of the, of the fighters. Um, I think that is, that is a problem for, for a long time. Uh, when uh, K1 started, uh, we um, the the Japanese uh, people saw, that, like for example, Holland was very strong, so they sent the Japanese fighters like Musashi uh, to Holland to train, uh, to learn, um, and apparently they thought that okay when I come here when they come here for one or two months then they will learn um, but it doesn't work like that and especially when you go back and you go back to the old routine it's the same thing again and uh, um, so maybe maybe Japanese martial arts needs some um, foreign influence and not not too traditional Japanese I think that would uh, would help um, having s said that uh, when I looked at the host cup uh, there are very good Japanese fighters uh, um, which they have to develop more. Uh, we need uh, more TV. Uh, we need the the K1 period uh, must come back, and not with the foreign fighters, but first with the Japanese fighters. And uh, why shouldn't that be possible? Age day, the you you get also the bar more. What are the that 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 day the you know. やっぱ、もう格闘家妙に見つけるような素晴らしいステージ。はい。そしてお客さん、ファン。もう、あの、で、もう、とにかくやり合い、やりがいの出るものが全て揃っていた時代だと思うんですけど。やっぱ今<
ビッグアーティスト海外のビッグアーティストがやるようなステージのよ,うのようなグッドメモリーです中で真剣勝負でもお客さんが狂ったようにもうそれに酔いしれるというかそういう環境を頑張って戦ってるファイターたちにこう味わわせてやりたいなっていうふうにはやっぱ思いますね。うん、だやっぱあの時代のムーブメントっていうのは<笑>まあもう<咳>だいたい約10年ほどたって<咳>ケアが終わってから再びあのムーブメントを起こしたいなっていう思いはやっぱあるしあのあの環境というかあの状況の中で今の選手たち戦い合わせてやりたいなっていう思い、うんまあ、昨日のホストカップの選手たちもやっぱいい試合をやっぱ環境がいいとやっぱ選手は絶対いい試合をしてくれるので、うんでねはい、やっぱここで俺はスターになるんで、うん、やっぱあのかんもちろん選手は練習で強くならなきゃいけないですけどやっぱ環境も育てると思うんで、うん、そういう環境づくりっていうのをやっぱその時代を知ってる人間が作ってやりたいなっていうか作らなきゃいけないのは義務じゃないかなっていうふうには感じますねはい。Oh yeah, there's always hope. 100% there's always hope.、Mm-hmm. Um, the, if, you, if you look back at boxing, for example,、mm-hmm. the biggest time, I think, for boxing was back in Muhammad Ali's the times, Joe、mm-hmm. Frazier, Marvin Hagler, Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Roberto Duran. I mean, these are all big names that in different divisions that anybody could be champion.、Yeah. And I remember going back to one Grand Prix time where they asked, about, they asked me a question in regards to the young up and coming talent. And what I said was, The way K1 is today, meaning at that time, will be just like the way boxing was in the time of the people that I just named. Now, K1 is you have Peter Ertz,、uh, Ernesto h u s Mike v e n a r d o Musashi, Andy Hogue,、uh, myself, Francisco Filho, Sam Greco.、Um, you know, so all these names, like there were eight to twelve guys. That were the, you know, pretty much at the top of the, the, the food chain in the terms of the standard of what K1 is. And I said, once those names are gone, K1 will never be the same again. There's going to be, just like boxing, there's going to be one guy that's going to come here and there. There's going to be another guy, that's gonna, maybe one or two guys, but it'll never be a mixture of so many talented fighters. Yeah, when you look back, it was a real special era. Right? Yeah. It was st- it, to me, it was like, and, and that's why I thank God every day that I was part of that era because all these names, I, and, and it's really sometimes for me, I, I get to pinch myself because just to think that I was amongst these, you know, amazing athletes, champions, however you are. You know, gods in terms of、uh, kickboxing, you know what I mean? And those are kind of the, that was the era that was. And so I said, K1 will never be the same again. Obviously, not knowing that K1 was going to end up shutting its doors down at some point. Now, that being said,、um, what, you know, who's cup and what I saw last night with、yeah. Doisan.、Um, That's a, a promising, h o s a is promising for the martial arts and for kickboxing in Japan. Because those shows, listen, listen K1 started kind of like that too. It started small, a lot of people doubted, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where it became the biggest kickboxing organization in the world. h o s a is a perfect example of. How martial arts or how kickboxing can continue to grow in Japan. And I think when you have you know, promoters like Doi san and, 
and you know obviously Hoos Cup is uh, with the Nurse of Hoos. Those are kind of names that you need to allow kickboxing to start to grow again. And so I think it's promising and there's always hope that um, at some point that's going to start again. And you know, when you look at the show last night, I thought there were some really good fights last night. Thank you. You know, so that's promising. And that gives uh, people like us, Peter, Ernesto, Musashi, myself, hope that kickboxing will start to grow again yeah. in, in Japan. And yeah. then of course, slowly, just like anything else, you start to move around across the world. You know, so yeah, there's always hope, and and I I think it is promising. And congratulations to you and Ernesto for, you know, the good job of putting that kind of card together. Because I thought there were some really good fights last night. Yeah, you know. I gotta say though, like this kind of thing, this kind of interview, like with such and Ernesto or Peter, this is really rare. Mm. You know, and man, it just gives me ideas of like, hopefully one day I'm gonna um, put my production team together to do this kind of interview because it's so refreshing. Because there's so many things that people don't understand that the kind of love and respect we all have for each other, because people only know, that, oh man, Nessa fought this guy, Peter is fought this guy, Mushas fought this guy. Very far, you know what I mean? Like, and they just think we just we just fight and that's it. You know what I mean? So it's really, I think it's so uh, educational for fans when you when you get this kind of thing together like this. It's I think it's really nice. Yeah.